I know it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> No. Played in the first Super Bowl and the second Super Bowl. Mark Starr. Okay. There you go. Go. I ain't let that down short. All right, Coach, welcome to Ohio State. We're just going to open up the floor for questions over here to the far left. Coach Joe Nugent, WCMH. How are you? Way over. How are you doing? Hey, very good, very good. Uh, how excited are you to be here, and what are the observations that you made here in the last week? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited. Um, this has been a journey. You know, I'm pretty sure most people read about my story um, since 2017, getting into college football. Um, this has been um, – had to pinch myself every, every, every morning that I'm here in Columbus at Ohio State. And, um, it's kind of surreal for me. So, um, great place, great people, um, great young men. So, I'm excited but just by being here. Dave Biddle, 24-7 Sports. When Coach Day reached out to you, uh, what was your initial reaction and just how did that first conversation go? Um, actually, um, no, I, it was a couple other places I had reached out earlier and uh, those things didn't you know, come to play. Um, I actually was getting up out of bed and I was heading to go work out. And um, I got a text and I shook my wife. And I was like, look at this. She's like, I don't know who that is. Let me get my glasses. <laughs> So I, I was I was excited and uh, man, I had like this um, like a kid on Christmas. I'm like, okay, well, I wonder what they what 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 does he want? Um, it was a pretty exciting um, text. And then when I called him, when I called him, and just to talk to him, man, I was like, I was I was pretty excited. Uh, Nathan Barry, Cleveland.com. This is obviously a, a unique running back situation, sort of this year with two guys. Um, with this talent, and this this background at the top of that group. How much of your discussions with Ryan through, I guess, the interview process were about how you might approach this, and and, and what do you think is maybe the the, the key element to getting the most out of those? Because you got two guys. Yeah. This ain't my first rodeo. No, um, I know a lot of people look and say, well, this guy only been on the field for um, three years, Western Kentucky and Oregon. Just because I didn't have the title of a running back coach where I was at in Memphis, I never carried myself that way. I always carried myself as a running back coach. I approached every day that way. So at Memphis, we had Darren Henderson, Patrick Taylor, Tony Pollard, Kenny Gainwell, Tony Gibson. I've seen talented backs, and I've seen them be able to function with one another. So I hear that all the time about, well, I, I, this ain't my first rodeo. Same thing out there at Oregon. We had Bucky Irvin, Noah Willis, and Jordan James. You go look at their numbers, they all function well together. We learn how to play as one. So um, this ain't my first rodeo. So And plus, I know those two kids because I recruited them when they was in high school. So uh, I'm up for the challenge and the responsibility of it. Uh, right behind him, Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. Carlos, just what is your kind of coaching philosophy? How do you get the best out of your running backs? I get the best out of them because I love the young men. My main focus is to change the, the hearts and minds of them, and they'll play for me. Um, I had just got through re reading um, Coach Trestle's um, Winner's Manual, and it's something that I took from that book. You have your purpose and you have your goals. All right, my purpose is to serve and pour into the young men. Now, my goals as a football coach, all of them will take care of themselves. So um, that's one of the ways. I'm just real relationship based, and I'm very detailed at this position. I, I know y'all heard me say it before, and I'm gonna keep saying it. This is the worst coach position in football. It's terrible. Guys hire anybody to coach this position and recruiters. Carlos Locke is not a recruiter. I'm an elite relationship builder, but I coach this position. I'm a ball coach. So that's who I am. So I'm going to pour into these kids. I think they kind of seeing it now. And I, I jumped in day one. I'm ready to coach. I know you used the phrase, no soft batch cookies. Where did that phrase come from? Kind of what was put in this for that? Well, let me tell you about that, boy. I've been called everything but the name of a child of God by the people at the other places I left. So the, I've been getting pills. Hey, Pillsbury need to give me a deal because I've been getting <laughs> – I've been getting some DMs and texts. I'm some of them have been so funny. The soft batch cookie thing, thing came from just having a frame of mind, a mental toughness. It had nothing to do with guys getting in the portal or anything. Now, most people say I'm a soft batch cookie for leaving there, but in actuality, I'm not because it takes great strength to make a decision to leave a place. No, a weak-minded person wouldn't be able to make the decision that I made. So it took great strength to do that. So. I'm telling you, if I let you in my DMs, it's some it's some great comedians out here that have been sending me like tons of cookies. And I'm like, hey, it's funny. Right behind them, Tony 
Gervin, Buckeye Huddle. How have you gone about the assessment of the talent in the room uh, over the past week or two? How much is that on field, off field? Like, what's the process of getting to know who you have as players? Well, I broke down, well, me being a guy that loves the running back position, I already broke those kids down because I recruited them out of high school. You know, Q is from where I'm from in Montgomery. I was one of the first guys to offer him. Um, just watching him, great contact balance, um, creative runner, um, great hands. And Trey, I recruited him out of Virginia. Exceptional short area burst and quickness and things that I'm going to help him get better on. And then I recruited James Peoples. Out of, t out of San Antonio, Texas. I knew what he was going to be. Um, TC and Sam, those two kids I'm getting to know, and I'm going to help them improve their game. But you know, we got different runners in there. Um, I like to call myself, uh, I'm in love with this position, so I get to break down runners and help their game. So um, talented, talented room, very talented. Uh, far back, uh, Jeremy Birmingham, podcast. Coach, uh how do you square the fact that soft batch cookies are actually the best cookies that Pillsbury makes in one? I mean, those are way better than the crunchy chips and white things. Those are terrible. Um, I mean, do you, do you have to find a balance there somewhere? Well, um, for me, I'm actually not eating any cookies. Um, <laughs> now, I'm just saying, I'm not eating any cookies this year. I gave it up for a fast, so no sweets for me for the whole year. Um, that's something I gave up. So um, the, the term, the soft batch cookie term, look, guys, I actually took that from um, – I represent the high school coaches of Memphis, Tennessee. I actually took that from a guy named Coach Slocum. Um, he used to always say that, soft batch cookie. I actually stole that from him. I give him credit for it, and I tell him all the time. He said, you, I should have branded that because you took it and ran away with it. But that's just where that comes from. So that, that notwithstanding, as you get to Ohio State and you start to look around the country, I mean, Oregon's a big place. That's a, that's a major job. But mm -hmm. how – how do you think that wearing the Ohio State logo on your chest, wearing the logo when you get out onto the recruiting trail, how does that change the way that you feel you're either um, received or, or does it add a different level to, to just feeling like I can go anywhere and get anybody in the country? It doesn't change the thing for me. This is a great place. Oregon was a great place too. But guess what? Whatever I put on, I know what I'm going to represent for me. I, I, I know who, who put me here. You know, I know I represent something higher. You know, like I told you, I know what my purpose is. My purpose is supporting the people. So whatever logo I have on, I'm still going to be doing the same thing. So this is a great logo, great logo. But I wear another logo every day. It's a cross I see around my neck. I know what I represent. So that's the greatest logo I could ever wear. So it doesn't matter what other logo I have on. I got that one on. I'm going to go into any house and be able to recruit. You mentioned the time at Memphis and that means four NFL running backs you mentioned there. What did you learn from that time that you continue to take over to managing the room here? What did I learn from them? I'm just building, just teaching the kids. We live in such a selfish world now. And like I tell kids all the time, there's got to be much more than football. The ball going to go flat one day, as I always say. When being in that room there at Memphis, it, it wasn't four, five. Um, Teaching them how to be about being one. I tell the young men all the time, it doesn't cost you anything to celebrate another man's success. So teaching them how to be one, and then once they learn to be one, they function and, and they feed off one another. So that's what I learned from being there in Memphis. Right in front of Andy Baxter, Carlos, how did your career in law enforcement kind of influence you as a coach and kind of shape who you are? <laughs> oh, well, I just got through talking to uh, somebody about that today. Um, when I first got in this profession, um, and I got my own room in Western Kentucky, I was asked, um, no, how was I going to be able to handle my room? I said, man, I had a pod with 51 inmates. You're talking about me having got six or seven guys? Are you kidding me? I'm talking about me having to do traffic stops or going on domestic you know, violence calls. It's simple, easy. You no, know, people want to know that you care. Also, you no. Know, you got to have a certain demeanor about yourself. So when I walk into a room, there's a reason why I go train every morning. This is when it's the same thing when I was a police officer. You look a certain way, kind of deter people from doing certain things. So that's the reason why I go train every morning. I'm going to look just as good as my boys look. So uh, it helped out a lot, in other words. Uh, front row right, Jeremy Birmingham, 
right? Austin Moore, uh, the podcast. Uh, Carlos, welcome to Columbus. Uh, what would it mean to, I don't know, revolutionize the way running backs are coached? What, what does that take? Um, I mean, I'm not going to say revolutionize. There's some, good, there's some good running back coaches out here. Everybody's different. There's some great coaches out here. Um, I just want the head guys who sit at, on these jobs to not just hire guys. Just you know, All coaches on your staff should be great recruiters, not just a running back coach. We coach the position. We develop players as well. I just want the coaches to realize, hey, you know what, let me look and be thorough about this guy that I'm hiring for the job. Is he teaching the position? Is he developing the position? Because you're not going to hire anybody just coach quarterbacks, are you? Well, it shouldn't be like that for the running back position either. And I'm only passionate about it because I played it. I love it. So it's the only position I want to coach. Could I coach other positions? Yeah. I played DB in college too. But I love the running back position. So I just want to see it coach well. Tim May, Tim May podcast. Yeah, a million questions. I'll ask a couple. Number one, when you, when you, when your wife, whatever, you got the message stuff, are we moving again? What was what was her reaction? Um, no, nah, she she just knew God had give us gave us a new assignment. She, it was never like we're moving again. Let me tell you guys something. I grew up. My mom was in the military, so I lived everywhere. I lived in Panama, South America. I'm used to picking up and moving. I lived in Fort Riley, Kansas. Montgomery's home. Memphis is my second home. So I'm I'm used to moving. Now my wife it was different for her, but um, she just knew God had gave us a new assignment. So it's time to go. What did uh, What did Coach Day tell you when he hired you that he wants? out of you that may be different? It's not slamming somebody else, but what did he say he wanted you to bring to the running back room? I think he did his research on me. Um, he said he wanted the guy to, to develop the position. And that's not taking a shot at um, the coach that was here, um, who I'm friends with. Um, and he said they want somebody to really um, get the guys going. Um, I can only be me. And I told him that, Coach, I'm going to be me every day now. Because, see, my mindset is when I step in this building, I got one mindset. That's to do my job so well that the living, dead, or unborn can do it any better. So when I leave here, that's what my mindset is. Hopefully I'm here for a long time. But only God knows that. So, But that's my mindset. Every day I step into the Wizard Hayes Center, that's my mindset. I'm going to do my job so well that the living, dead, or unborn can do it any better. So that's what my mindset is. Folks, we have time for one last question. Bill Rubinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Carlos, first of all. Is it true that nobody calls you Carlos and everyone calls you Locke? Is that true? Yeah, um, I prefer to be called Locke. Um, I know Coach Landon would call me. I thought maybe trying to take a shot at me every now and then he was out there at, at Oregon called me Carlos, but I prefer to be called Coach Locke, so that's fine. You were in law enforcement. You, you had played football, obviously, Chattanooga. What made you decide to leave law enforcement to get back into coaching and starting at the very bottom? Um, and, and doing it when you had an established career. I'm gonna share, I'm gonna share this with you all because I know a lot of people may not may not know this. When I first got to Memphis, that's not the first school I went to try to work at. I actually went to a small liberal arts school there in Memphis called Road College to try to get on that staff. I was told I didn't have enough experience. I need to go back and you know, coach high school. I think at that time God was telling me I was thinking too small. Um, the decision for me to get into Coaching football, that was God's decision. Because this is just an extension of my ministry to pour into people. So me getting out of law enforcement, I enjoyed my life in law enforcement. But I knew I could reach more people by me uh, being able to coach ball. I want to be a bridge builder. I want to help out young men. Not just young men, but the coaches that I work with. Help them achieve their dreams and their goals. So um, that was part of it. Coach, thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Coach Locke. Appreciate you. Thank you. Hey, folks, I'm sorry.